Thank you, Anthony. Um, and I think you've already touched on a number of very important issues, which, which I will um, cover to some extent as well. But I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to speak at the Tech UK this year virtual summit. Um, I think that the importance of digital technology has been growing steadily each year. But obviously, the challenges that we have faced over the course of the last few months has accelerated its adoption and made, therefore, some of the issues raised by it even more pressing. Um, I'm, like I suspect most people attending today, I appear to be sort of living on my screen almost for the whole of each day. Um, and our way of working has completely transformed. And that in itself brings um, issues with it. But I think the choice of digital ethics as being the uh, theme of your summit this year is absolutely right. Um, because digital ethics encompasses a huge range of different issues from ensuring that the benefits of the digital transformation taking place are shared and felt equally by everyone right across society to discussions about how digital technology and data have supported people during the pandemic, um, but also looking at the role of data in highlighting and addressing, rather than on the other hand, reinforcing systemic bias, which is something you, you touched on uh, in your introduction a few moments ago. Uh, and certainly the ethical principles which, which all of us uh, adhere to have been put to the test uh, right across uh, the world. Now, the government is committed to ensuring that all parts of the country can benefit from this greater digital transformation and can seize the opportunities that digital technology and data uh, offer us. Uh, and I've no doubt that we will hear a lot of examples throughout the summit about the potential for data te uh, digital technology and data to fuel innovation and growth. And that is very much uh, the theme of the government's approach. Uh, but at the same time, while we see, we, we see the use of digital technology and data as opportunities uh, to be embraced, uh, we are also very conscious of the risks which we need to guard against in a proportionate and targeted way. Uh, we need to acknowledge that there are risks such as human introduced bias, discriminatory outcomes, or indeed unsafe applications. Uh, and they need to be addressed if we are to obtain the huge benefits that are offered by this technology. So responsible use of data and digital technology is absolutely key. Uh, and by responsible, we mean data and digital technology being handled in a way that is lawful, secure, fair, ethical, sustainable, and accountable, whilst supporting innovation and research. Without the responsible use of data, we will simply not manage to realize the huge opportunities that digital technology and data offer to us. This year's summit, I think, provides a valuable opportunity to reflect on what has happened over the course of this last year uh, and ensure that we build on the lessons uh, that have already been gained. And as all the countries around the world have battled a public health emergency, uh, a spotlight has rightly been shone on the importance of data and digital technology in tackling uh, COVID-19. And whether it was the scientists at Oxford University using the data collected by NHS Digital to assess the effectiveness of emerging treatments, or um, the use of technology simply to allow us to stay connected with friends and loved ones through video conferencing, using apps to allow us to get essential supplies delivered to our front door, to tech platforms working with our educational institutions to provide our children with access to high quality learning resources. It is digital technology and data that have enabled these things and will continue to play a crucial role in combating and living with the virus. And our struggles with COVID-19 will not end with the current phase of the public health crisis. We need to ensure the resilience of the country to respond to future crises and to rebuild our economy to recover from this one. 
we are already aware of the huge opportunities that digital technology and data present to us. But the pandemic has given us a glimpse of what lies in store if we can achieve our ambitions. So as we enter into the recovery, it is vital we make the most of what we have learned. As the nation has faced unprecedented disruption to everyday life, and many people's health and economic situation has been put at risk. In my own department, we have been able to utilize our perspective and insights given the breadth of the sectors that we oversee in supporting the UK's response to the pandemic. And I'd just like to give you four examples of how we've done that. First, we've used data and digital technology in innovative and creative ways to support our response. We were posed with a range of challenges and our ability to utilize technology and data to support people and businesses across the country was key to our response. We worked closely with our sectors from using data insights to assist charities to better target support in their sector, to supporting our regulators with initiatives such as the Stay Connected campaign that have helped to keep families to stay connected throughout the pandemic. And at the same time, the government digital service has worked across the public sector to build and launch digital, digital services. So in just a few days, a business volunteering service was built, which facilitated over 40,000 offers of support from industry to the COVID-19. We've also supported individuals and businesses to acquire digital skills to support their well-being and future prospects. It was very clear from the early stages of the pandemic that digital skills would be absolutely crucial if we were able to stay connected, participate in the workplace, uh, and to manage our own physical and mental well-being. And it's been through our local digital skills partnerships that we have brought together regional partners to help individuals and businesses navigate the challenges of a changing working environment. Through this initiative, we were also able to support vulnerable groups to access the digital devices that brought them closer to their loved ones. Digital skills have also been essential to analyze data that was the key to understanding the spread of COVID-19 and where and when to target the measures to stop it. The government recognized that digital skills will be essential for our long-term recovery. And that's why we're investing in the digital boot camps to support more individuals to up skills and reskill in order to find make meaningful employment. We've also pressed ahead with a 13 million pound degree conversion course programming in data science and AI. And over 600 students started these courses this autumn uh, and more are due to start early next year. We've also collaborated to encourage data sharing across government and the public sector the accessibility and availability of data has been absolutely crucial to that response. It has allowed the government, the NHS, and other organizations to respond and help those in need. And ensuring that it has been done in a secure and ethical way is fundamental in order to secure public trust in these initiatives. My department has also worked closely with the Information Commissioner's Office to advise and support departments across government and their frontline services in order that they can share data lawfully and responsibly. And whether this has been through the development of the contracts tracing systems or the provision of support uh, for food parcels for vulnerable people or the introduction of visitors' logs in uh, public places, the ICO has supported the government departments to develop pragmatic and privacy-friendly solutions. I also want to um, thank the Centre for Data Ethics and in Innovation, who have been crucial in identifying and supporting best practice for the public sector in responding to the pandemic. The Centre has built a repository for novel use cases of artificial intelligence and data specifically being used to counter and mitigate the effects of COVID-19. And the center's future functions are being consulted on as part of our national data strategy. But I hope that the center will be able to support more of this sort of responsible innovation, bringing direct benefits to our citizens in future. 
One example which was identified in the repository is the trial of HoloLens 2, which is a mixed reality headset uh, being used on a respiratory ward at the University Hospital of Morecambe Bay. It is that technology which offers the capability to minimize face-to-face -face contact with patients who may be symptomatic of COVID-19. Local authorities have also been deploying technology in novel ways during the pandemic. Just to give one example, Swansea Council has used chatbots to provide confidential support to abuse victims, while Argyle and Butte Council has trialled drone technology to deliver vital medical supplies across its islands. We have also been most effective where the national government, the private sector and local authorities have worked together. Just to take the vulnerable person service, which has supported hundreds of thousands of extremely vulnerable people right across the UK to access priority supermarket deliveries, deliveries and a variety of local support. That couldn't have happened without the necessary data sharing agreements between central government, local authorities and the private sector. COVID-19 has shown how important digital technology and data is for our society. And these technologies are only going to become more important as we look to rebuild our economy. It's shown us that it is important that we have the right data and digital skills across the UK, and that that collaboration between government, the private sector and civil society is key in order to deliver these important initiatives. We've also seen that we need to create an environment where data is usable, accessible and available across the economy and privacy and protection is factored into its use. We need to take a considered approach that balances and manages the myriad of consequences that come with making data available. And lastly, it's absolutely vital that we take people on the journey with us. We will not be able to persuade people of the opportunities that digital technology and data present to us if we don't use them in a responsible way. We need to ensure that these lessons are not lost. They've shown us what is possible and given us an insight into the incredible power of digital technology and data. So how do we take it forward from here? As you've mentioned, the national data strategy is the central part of the government's wider ambition for a thriving, fast-growing digital sector in the UK, which is underpinned by public trust. And I'd like to thank Tech UK and many, I suspect, of those on the call today for supporting the development of the strategy and for engaging in our consultation. We extended the consultation until today, to, um, today uh, because of the many requests that we had and the large number who wished to respond. Uh, and the team here will now be analysing all the responses that we have received, and we will in due course publish a government response. But we are already working to, pro to progress a number of the actions we set out in the strategy in order to realise these opportunities. Part of this is about addressing the basic foundations, and we've recently seen key progress in tackling issues of data quality across government with the publication of the Government Data Quality Framework. The framework provides a set of principles for managing the quality of data effectively in government and practical advice to support that implementation. We also remain absolutely committed to establishing a pro-growth and pro-innovation data regime while maintaining public trust, as well as facilitating international flows of data underpinned by high data protection standards. Key to driving progress will be the establishment of the right structures to ensure that we can monitor and assess progress across the five key missions so that we can deliver tangible results. Beyond data, we are committed to driving growth in the digital sector and wider economy and to ensuring that we maximize the benefits of a digital-led economic recovery. So the forthcoming digital strategy will support and build upon the objectives set out in the national data strategy, both in the context of the pandemic and how we can use digital technology to support recovery and build back better. 
It's vital, as I say, that the lessons are not lost and that we take them forward, not only through our recover recovery, but also because digital technology and data will be important in supporting us to tackle free future challenge, such as meeting our net zero targets. And there has been some very useful work done recently showing how digital technology can play an absolutely vital role in ad addressing our climate change uh, challenges. So it's been just nearly a year since we have been forced to adjust to COVID. It's been an extraordinary year for everybody, I have no doubt, who is taking part. Um, all of us have had to make sacrifices in the way that we live. But as the examples that I've given suggest, DCMS, for instance, would not have been able to support the response to the pandemic without collaboration across the public and private sectors and civil society. So I want to use this opportunity to thank everybody uh, at the summit for the help that you have given us. Um, we have learned a lot already, and we need to ensure uh, that we take those lessons forward. And now that the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine has been approved to be rolled out across the UK after months of clinical reason, uh, trials, we have at least some reason to look forward to 2021 with a positive outlook. So we are committed as a government to ensure that we can realize the opportunities that the responsible use of data and tech can bring to the UK. And we will continue to ensure that these technologies will drive the delivery of key government priorities. Thank you. Thanks. Melissa, thank you so much. I think um, uh, you, you really did set out there um, just what an incredibly um, busy year it's been and, and just the enormous um, demands that have been uh, placed on the department. Um, and, and I, for one, certainly, I, I, I think, um, you know, you talked about the, the, the collaboration that we've seen this year. And I think, um, you know, it has been outstanding, actually, uh, the level of collaboration, um, both uh, with the private sector, but also the work that we've seen across departments as well. Um, and I think it has been absolutely essential to to uh, kind of keeping keeping the economy going, driving the, the response to, to the pandemic and so on. So a huge thanks uh, to everybody in the department for, for all of that. Um, I just have one, one kind of question, um, which is about, um, you know, we're, we're talking here about kind of uh, digital ethics, um, about the, um, which, which obviously is clearly a, a, a global issue. Um, and, um, and if we're going to develop uh, uh, enduring solutions to this, that has to be based on kind of global kind of uh, cooperation and, uh, and collaboration. I was wondering where and how you think the UK can really um, uh, lead the, the international debate on, on some of these issues, uh, uh, perhaps with some of the opportunities that we've got coming up with, uh, with uh, the G7, for example, and, and, and areas like that. I, I think there's a huge opportunity here. I mean, the UK has an ex outstanding reputation. Um, we value civil liberties and human rights. Um, and, you know, as the country of Magna Carta, you know, we are seen as a beacon uh, for the protection of individual rights. Um, and that is absolutely crucial, as I was saying earlier, in terms of building trust which is essential if we are to get people to adopt digital technology. Uh, and so not just because of the already uh, strong reputation we have in this area, and I think you know, bodies like the Center for Data Ethics and Innovation are doing really terrific work, which is providing guidance and um, uh, um, reports which will be applicable, uh, not just here, but in a lot of other countries but we also have an opportunity because we actually have a position of some influence in a number of the international bodies um, as you referenced we are about to take on the presidency of the g7 um, and we have made it one of the key themes of our presidency uh, to promote the use of digital technology but alongside that to um, try to establish greater agreement about the need to underpin that with ethics. But, but it isn't just um, in the G7. I mean, I'll just give you three other um, sort of fora in which we are going to be playing a leading role. There is a group of nations called the Digital Nations um, who are, are sort of quite a, a disparate group in terms of geography. I mean, they stem from Uruguay to South Korea, with Estonia, with Israel. Um, but all of us 
are both sort of quite far advanced in the adoption of digital technology and also um, share common values. And so we will be using the Digital Nations Group, which we are also chairing uh, to promote those. Uh, then there is the specific uh, body called the Global Partnership on AI. And I attended the council meeting of what, what we call GPAY um, last week, where again, um, that is a body which shares common values uh, where we want to develop um, underlying guidance for the adoption and use of AI. And then lastly, I, I briefly touched on um, you know, another massive global challenge, which, which we have not overlooked, even though we are facing an immediate crisis, and that is the longer-term challenge of uh, climate change, uh, which has most certainly not gone away, although... Ironically, you know, for a few months, the, air, uh, the sky was empty of aeroplanes. But, but we do need to uh, continue to work towards that net zero tar target. And we are um, obviously hosting COP26 um, shortly. Uh, and we see digital technology as playing an absolutely vital role uh, in getting down uh, the level of carbon emissions, uh, not just here, but right across the world. So I think... There is a massive opportunity for Britain to take a lead uh, in all these different bodies uh, and to build on the work and the lessons that we've already learned. Minister, you've, you've set out um, just how much has been achieved this year, what a busy year it's been, um, and, then, and now you just set out um, what sounds like an extraordinarily busy year. Uh, in the <laughs> Um, and uh, well, I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and you know, we very much look forward to working with you um, uh, next year. Uh, so thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, and Anthony, can I can I just say thank you to you because Tech UK have played a really helpful and valuable role in the preparation of a strategy. So I, I hope we can continue to work together. Thanks so much. That's great to hear. Thank you so much for joining us.